Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's the Mysterious Cameraman. And today we're going to be talking about a cultural phenomenon that hasn't occurred in a few years. And it's not even about saying this is happening or it isn't happening, but it's more about saying, what if this is happening? What if this is actually going on? And a few years ago, we had this massive event called Barbenheimer, which I don't think anyone will ever forget, but it was, if you don't remember, when Oppenheimer and Barbie, two of the biggest movies of that year, released on the exact same day and were two vastly different films. And neither film was similar in pretty much any way. And yet they both came out and they were like competing almost. Like the amount of thing that, things that came out about it was crazy. And... I started to think this week, um, what if there was a new Barbenheimer, but not in film, but in the TV area? And I don't even know what it would be called, like Pagatha or like Pangatha, maybe Pangatha, I don't know. But it's really between Penguin and Agatha all along. Two shows that are so different, yet so similar. First off, they released on the same day. Um, Agatha's nine episodes, Penguin's eight episodes, but we have two Agatha episodes on the same day. So literally they both released on at the same time. And they both released the same day a few weeks ago. Um, and the biggest thing is one's by Marvel, one's by DC. These are two very rival studios. And at first these episodes were airing the same day, but they ended up changing Penguin to releasing on Sundays instead of on Wednesdays. So at this point, three episodes of Agatha have come out and only one of Penguin. Um, I'm very sad to see Penguin episode two, but I started to think when I was watching, once I watched both, that this really is the second Oppenheimer, or Barbenheimer, really. Because these shows are so different, yet so, like, you get that vibe. Because we have this hocus pocus musical show versus this dark, gritty show. And the thing is, is neither one is, was expected to be good. Unlike Barbie and Oppenheimer, neither one of these films, neither one of these shows, are supposed to be good. Both are supposed to be like, no one expected them to be good, and also, no one was really excited for them. I think there were maybe a few people who wanted Agatha, a few people who wanted Penguin. I don't think many people were looking forward to these shows, and I think like the fact that these two underdog shows released on the same day are so different, yet they both really prove themselves. So in this video, we're going to be talking about both shows quickly, my quick thoughts, and then we're going to talk about, is this really Barbenheimer 2? So first, we're going to begin with Agatha. Why not? Um, Agatha was so good. Like, I was not expecting to say I enjoyed watching that show. Um, starting into this new school year, I've been working hours. Like, it has been killing me. And yet, I sat down that weekend and I said, I'm forcing myself to watch Agatha, and oh wow, was that show good. Like, I did not expect it to be good. I saw the memes online of the witch's um, road, and it wasn't, the first two episodes were actually pretty solid. Um, I think episode one was very good. I loved the crime aspect, and it felt different, yet it felt so fun because I think it's such a good opener, because it sets the tone of this vastly different world, yet it sets the idea of like, we, we all know that wasn't going to be how it was going to be. So I thought that was so genius, and it was done really so brilliantly. And I think that first episode was so strong because you have how it really did a lot that you wouldn't expect. Because Agatha was so good. Her acting was incredible. And we also had this incredible idea of, like, this true crime element that really you felt it. Like, when they did that intro, that intro with all of the, um, like, fake cast members, I was dying. And when they did, like, the based off the um, Danish show, I think, WandaVision or something. It, it, like, it was so funny. And I think it really knew what it was doing, and I think they went for it, and I love it. Um, I heard a rumor that this is, like, part two of the three-part series where it's, like, WandaVision, this, and then Vision Quest. Um, I hope not. I think WandaVision was so good for what it was, but I don't think I can watch three WandaVisions. That's the issue. And the other thing is I think Vision's good, I don't think Vision's a lead. I think Vision's, like, a side at best. Like, I don't think he's a character that can carry his own show. I think Agatha is has such an actress that I think she can do it. But this show, the first episode, was very strong. It had a lot of very fun scenes. 
Um, I don't have infinitely much to say. It is very much self-explanatory, and I think a lot of it has been said already. Um, I think it was just very fun to watch. I think once you move on to episode two, I didn't love episode two as much, I'm going to say. Um, I think the witch, I really like the ending. I think the back half is so much stronger than the front half, because I think the front half of the episode kind of drags with the recruitment. Because it's, like, we all know, I think if you've ever seen the trailer, what's going to happen. And for me, at least, I feel like a lot of shows, when you've been seeing the trailer, at least it does something interesting. I didn't feel like I was getting anything new out of what was going on in this episode. Like, I feel like I pretty much knew everything that was going to happen, and it felt very generic. And I get that Agatha is bad. I do, but I don't think the entire show being based around the fact that she's bad and, like, this incredibly evil witch is, like, a very good base. But I do love something in the back half is how much they go into the witch lore. I think how they really define, like, I think even the credits are so good. Um, I could do a credits breakdown. I don't think I'm going to. But the cre- the credits really do such a good job at telling you all this witch lore in all this, like, weird, messed up way. It's really done so well. But even in the episode, you feel like you're watching this Halloween Hocus Pocus musical type show. It doesn't feel like you're watching like a Marvel show. It feels like you're very much watching Hocus Pocus. And I think that's done so well because I think if this show was another Marvel show, yet it was trying to do this, I don't think it would have worked. Um, I think one of the reasons why this show works and actually works is because it has a very clear vision and it knows what it's doing with it. And I think what's so good about this show is the fact that they wouldn't have made it unless they had a very good idea, which gives me hope for what's going to come because I think a show like She-Hulk felt like they just wanted to introduce She-Hulk and they needed a way to do it. I think um, Agatha really is a show that they wanted to tell this story and then they decided to do it. I think it was Echo's more in the middle because I don't think they really knew what they wanted to do with Echo but like that's a very different story I never spoke about that I don't want to but like really when I was watching Agatha I was impressed because like Loki was like incredible I loved season 2 of Loki but I think I think that's like expected Agatha's just so different because I don't have an emotional connection to any character on that show and I still find it entertaining and it's like this weird phenomenon because I came out of watching those first two episodes and had no clue why I enjoyed watching that show, but I did. And it was a little bit weird, but I kind of just like went with it almost. And then we move on to episode three before we get to the penguin. Um, episode three, I did not like that much. Um, the housewives weird i think it was, i don't even know what it was based off of i think i heard a rumor that was like like house i don't even know what it was i did like the aspect ratio tr- changing i did like that a lot that was clever but i think the lighting all the costume changes i did enjoy that and i enjoyed how it was this nice change of pace where everyone kind of just sat down because it allowed these characters to kind of like be themselves in a way and I also really like how we got, like, this idea of, like, each episode we're going to get a trial for a specific witch. Um, I also think that means a witch is going to die in each episode. But at this point, we've, we've by episode 6, we're going to get all the trials, I think. Then I don't know, like, 7, 8, 9, I don't know what's going to happen there. I'm excited to see, though. But I think what this show has been doing so well that I've enjoyed is especially, like, I think it just told such a fun story. I think episode three began better than it ended. I think I did like them exploring the road and the dynamic between them. I feel like once they got into the house, it kind of got more bland. Um, I did like that hallucinations though. I think the hallucinations were done so well. I loved seeing how the horror aspects really came out. Um, I, I loved Agatha not drinking the wine at first. I think that was such a brilliant move. And I really like how it, had this potion master have to come out and really do save them so i'm very excited to see what they're going to do next time if it's going to be like for like fortune telling or something but i think it does it very well and in a compelling manner so you really do care what's going to happen to these characters which is something i really didn't expect as we move into the back half of the episode i think it's 
better. I think like the middle really does dip a bit, but I think once we get to the end, I think it's very good. And I actually think that ending line, like, um, oh my god, I'm blanking on her name, but like, how do, she didn't know Mrs. Hart's first name. And I thought that was like the most Agatha line, but I thought that was so clever. Like that was a really funny line in my opinion. And like, I didn't ex- that the thing is I didn't expect it to be funny. That's like the worst part. Like you didn't, ex- like, I didn't expect to be laughing, but like, I kind of like, get, like I was like, why is that funny? But like it like landed and then like the episode just ends. And I thought that was like the most like, I think that was a very good ending. Now let's move on to Penguin. I loved the first episode of Penguin. It was not, I will say, I put off watching Penguin because I did not expect it to be good. And the only reason I started watching it was because I saw that the mother from How I Met Your Mother was um, Sophia Falcone. And I was like, fine. Once I realized that I was just watching a ripoff version of Gotham from the CW plus Sopranos, I was like, sure, why not? And I think you know, if you've ever seen my channel, how much I love Gotham. So now that I'm, like, re-watching this, like, new version of it, I think it's done so well. Um, I, the, oh my god, the characters are so compelling. Like, you care so much for every single character who's in this. Like, um, I think his name's Victor, the, um, the guy who gets, like, shot at by Penguin. He's, like, I love his acting, how he's just, like, bumbly like little guy who like doesn't want to die and he's like just this little kid but like he's like done so well and he's still like a teen like he's not like little but like his dialogue is written so well and i love his dynamic with penguin and penguin's also so good in this series he is at his acting is so good and like he does like it's so much makeup and so much work to get him into the costume but like it's done it looks so good it like it's done so well and he is such a great actor for this role. Like, I don't see anyone else who could play Penguin as good as he does. And they're really doing a different take on him. But I, do, I don't care because it's done so well. And I love it. Like, it is really such a... Like, I didn't expect this to be good. It's the same with Sophia Falcone. I did not expect this, so, this Sophia Falcone to be so good. But she really is. She's, like, threatening. And she's crazy. You see she's crazy. But she's done so well. And I just love how compelling every character is i think by the end of it like i feel like i had a connection to every single character who was in it which i don't really feel normally coming out of the first episode of the show most first episodes it's like okay we're getting into it or maybe i have a connection to the main character that's like it in one episode that's like an hour like i love the hour format it's just so good and i love that it's hbo like the amount of jokes that, like, you can make, like, oh, this is an HBO show. But, like, you see it, you feel the energy, and it, it works so well for Gotham. Yes, I think if they just went from Batman 1 to Batman 2, I don't think it will work as well. I love how we're getting the building of Gotham as a city, so that once we get into the Batman 2, it's going to be this whole new version of the city, and we're now, like, so much... I wouldn't even say more, like, involved, but it really builds the character of the city, and that's not something I expected to like, but it's done just so well. And I really do love how interesting the Penguin is as a character. Because he very clearly has his motivations. He very clearly has what he wants to do. He has his big issue set out, which is the fact that he murdered um, the Falcon. And yet, it's done so well. And like I literally said to my friend after watching it, like, this feels like if this was on its own and just like a short film, I'd be happy. But, like, it feels like a pilot of a show. It has everything. You meet, like, all of these characters. Like, it feels like this was a TV pilot, and I love that. And it's all dialogue. There's no fighting, really, but all the dialogue is so thought out. It's so good. And I feel like this show just... Obviously, it's like a slow burn. I can't say much at this point. But I think it really is just so brilliant right now. So, is this next Barbenheimer? I think it could be. I think both shows have a ton of potential. I think Agatha, I've heard episode four is very good. I've heard past that point is very good. So I'm very excited to see if Agatha becomes very good and if Penguin can get even better from where it is at. I think this could be very good. And I'm very excited to see Penguin episode two tomorrow and everything else that comes out. 
And I'm really, I'm just so excited to see how good these shows can get because these rival shows, it's Marvel, DC, lightish hearted, very dark and gloomy, HBO versus Disney Plus. Like you get these two massive, this massive like divide between these shows. Like, but they're released on the same day. And I don't think you can't make that connection because it's just so funny that they both released on that same day. And yet it's done. Like, I think they couldn't do something with that. Like, I don't think I'm the first one to say this, but I think it's just such a funny thing that these two so different shows are releasing on the same day. And I don't think it's happened before. I know Star Wars and and Marvel have. Like, it's the same company. I don't think Disney and DC have ever. I think that's such a different vibe. So yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Um, Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.